You laugh, you think, and you cry. That's a full day. That's a heck of a day. We'll have to tell yeah. you which songs are inspired by your wine, like which songs were written while indulging. Oh, I, I don't think I'll ever forget, David, you saying, be your best champion. All right, let's have some fun. Here. To next year. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful Wagyu short rib. We're gonna just coat it in the Yemenite spice. I'm like, it's it's Saint Steel. Saint Steel's coming, and he's like, if it's Saint Steel, just ride it for free. I'm like, <laughs> join us as we savor world class wine, experience culinary adventures, and discover inspiring stories from our dedicated community of vintners, chefs, artisans, and beyond as we go behind the V. I'm AJ and welcome to Behind the V. On today's segment, I'm honored to be joined. <laughs> I'm honored to be joined by legendary father-son duo Jesse Katz and Andy Katz. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, it's so great Thank to be here. Hello, birthday father. Yes. Hello, <laughs> my son. Cheers to you. Indeed, cheers. And I wish everyone could see right now. We're kind of at the perfect lighting. The sun is going to start setting. It's just gorgeous right now. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesse and I are here at Aperture in Healdsburg, Aperture Cellars in Healdsburg. And if you haven't been here, I highly recommend coming. It is an absolutely stunning view, stunning wine, stunning tasting room. You guys really go top notch here. Thank you. It's really exciting to be in this space. This has been a crazy year as we all have uh, endured and getting to open this amazing space uh this was we opened it up in july and oh so we're supposed to open up in april but uh due to some uh obvious reasons we were delayed a little bit but it's been amazing to be able to open this space up get people in here enjoying wines uh and situated right here in the middle of our vineyards overlooking our state-of-the-art winery uh so it's truly been a dream come true oh it's wonderful yeah. yes it really is gorgeous and andy where are you joining us from uh, I'm in San Francisco. I'm watching a big freighter going by in the bay here. It's a gorgeous <laughs> day, and uh, I'm just happy to be with you all. Oh, we're so happy that you could join us as well. Uh, so for those just joining, once again, I am here with Jesse Katz and Andy Katz. And if you have questions throughout the broadcast, please drop them in the comments. We'll be able to see them and pull them up. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have throughout the show. Uh, now, Jesse, you have become one of the most well-respected wine professionals in California. Um, my question is, well, first, you're the first winemaker ever to be included in the Forbes 30 under 30 list. I have to read this because your accolades are so long. Wine and mm -hmm. 40 under 40 tastemaker and being named a wine spectator rising star. My biggest question is when do you sleep? Um, not a lot, but uh, especially <laughs> during harvest, there's a little sleep going on right now. But uh, I'm really fortunate, uh, similar to my father, I've just found a career um, that I absolutely am obsessed with. And no matter uh, whether I needed to do this for work or not, this is something that I would uh, do throughout my life. And there will be very, very little things that are going to stop me from doing this. And uh, I'm not born into being a winemaker or a wine family, this is something that I was introduced through my father's photography. And so I feel just honored that I was able to get introduced to wines, start drinking them at a very young age, and actually get to do something that I feel that I'm really um, uh, well suited for in an industry that is a little bit rare for a lot of folks. Absolutely, yeah. I love that. We were just talking about that before the broadcast, actually, um, you know, that your father used to take you on trips for a lot of his assignments and that's kind of how you discovered wine is that right this will be the first year my father and i haven't gone international since i was 17 months old dad i don't know you when when was the last time yeah that was a long time ago and i think it's an inexcusable <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we've we've traveled uh, i'm an only child and i've traveled my entire life uh with my family and from the age early age of i think 17 months was when we went to japan uh ever since then we've not stopped traveling I think my dad and I have traveled over 80 countries together. Uh, and normally every year we at least do one international trip. Um, from my early teens till today, often many of those trips were in wine regions. Uh, so we've traveled extensively and lived in Tuscany and Burgundy and Bordeaux and um, 
while I was a kid growing up in Colorado, that was my introduction to wine, was living in all these areas. And if you're a kid in the teenage years, they pour you a little glass of wine and introduce it to you as it should be, as part of the culture and part of the food of the area. Absolutely. And so that was my introduction to uh, wine, it was through my father's art. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. And what are your thoughts on that, Andy, as far as introducing Jesse to wine through your art? Well, I, he didn't have much of a choice because he started when he was a really, really little kid. And he got so used to being thrown on a plane, he thought it was a very normal act. So <clears throat> he was an excellent traveler, always has been an excellent traveler. Didn't, he'd get on a flight for eight or nine, 10, 11 hours, and it just didn't bother him at all. He just would amuse himself, and thank goodness. Uh, and uh, so he was he was put his... Uh, his feet into vineyards uh, at the age probably started about a year and a half and uh, hasn't stopped uh, since. But uh, he became very comfortable in uh, being around wine people. Uh, he was very comfortable when you're in areas. I had some dear friends over there and would have these great dinners. And as he would sit with everyone, no matter what his age was, and they'd pour him wine and he, he even as a little kid, he would not touch a, a, a McDonald's burger. We had a dog, and he'd go to, <laughs> he'd go to get a, a happy toy or whatever the hell it's called, and he'd give the dog the burger, and he'd ask for sushi after that. So he's always had a pretty amazing food palate. So when we were in these great areas, he would be eating great food, and they'd give him a little bit of wine, and he got a little child buzz going on, and he was just one <laughs> So pretty much I've just been drinking for a pretty while. That's how, that's, yeah. that's how you got into some wine. of the just success. Drinking. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's incredible. Well, so again, Jesse, I know that you've been a part of the V Foundation. You've been, you know, coming to the wine celebration. You've been a great supporter for us for for a little bit now. It's and been our honor. It's been amazing to have you. And we are so excited to now partner with you for our new event in Sonoma. Yes. At the end of March. So March 24th. Four, yeah, 24th through 27th, our new event, the Sonoma Epicurean. Yes. And so, of course, when we decided to come over to Sonoma, you were one of the first ones we contacted. Um, and as why we are here now as well, you are so generously donating 20% of all sales from your soil series of wines. Yeah. And so we'll be trying a few of those today. Do you want to go ahead and let us know the first wine that we're going to be? Sure, absolutely. Well, um, and you can find these on our website right yes. now. Uh, that's the best way. And uh, there should be a code going on there. 20% mm -hmm. of all proceeds will be going to the Bee Foundation. We're honored to be uh, partnering with you. And also really excited that you guys are finally coming over to the Sonoma side. Yes. Uh, is this is time. very close to my heart. Obviously, <laughs> I lived in Napa for many years. And then when I moved over to Healdsburg, where we are here in Sonoma County, uh, I think this is as special as it gets as far as it goes to wine country in an area. And I think a lot of people who've been supporting Bee Foundation for many years mm -hmm. are really going in for a treat on the Sonoma side if they haven't been yet. Absolutely. I think there are a number of people over here that would agree with yes. you. They've been trying to get us to Sonoma for a long time. Uh, but the wine that we poured in our glass, and I don't know what you have because you're uh, 100 miles away, but what we're drinking is the Aperture Sauvignon Blanc. That's uh, what I'm drinking. That's what you're drinking. Wow. Aww. Great minds think alike. <laughs> um, so this is really inspired from uh, my time in Bordeaux, getting to study out there. And while I was mostly on the right bank of Bordeaux studying at Chateau Petrus, um, which they just make one wine, uh, Merlot uh, there, my father was doing his book called The Club of Nine, which a lot of that was focused on the first course of Bordeaux. And I was really fortunate I got to kind of hang around with him uh, prior to all the red wines coming in on the right bank and spent a lot of time at wineries like Chateau Margaux and Aubryon and these wineries. And uh, it was really, I went over there to study the red wines, but I really came back with a whole new appreciation for the varietal Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon, which are Bordeaux Blancs, uh, which this is a blend of as well. We call this our Sauvignon Blanc, but there's a little Semillon in there. Um, but the attention to detail that they had with farming, uh, as far as how hard they would press the grapes and how that would change the flavor profile, all the way to the barrel fermentations, which mm -hmm kind of in the new world style, you think of stainless steel fermented, uh, quick to bottle and kind of the New Zealand style where this is, has so much more body and richness and complexity that to me, it's just such more uh, a, an interesting wine and gives you more variety of pairings as well. And so our Sauvignon Blanc here at Aperture is the first white wine we ever released mm -hmm. and is inspired from the Bordeaux Blanc, 100% barrel fermented, 
It's 30% in new French oak barrels, but you really are just going to see it's going to lift the fruit, aid to the minerality, the spice, and it still has all those gorgeous Sauvignon Blanc aromas. And, and also, just to interrupt for a second, but Jesse actually uh, uh, specified certain barrels for just this wine. You might want to mention about that, Jesse. Yeah, while at Aubryon, we were getting to taste all the previous uh, vintage of Bordeaux of their Bordeaux Blanc, uh, which often sells for more than their red wine. It's, it's a very right. limited wine. It's a spectacular wine. Um, and there were certain barrels that Aubryon had custom made for themselves, which are French oak bodies. So all the staves of the barrel are French oak, but the heads are toasted acacia wood. Mm -hmm. And I really couldn't find those anywhere out uh, there. So we actually have them shipped over from Bordeaux specifically for this wine. So 10% oh, wow. of that new oak are those toasted acacia heads, um, which it's really kind of hard to, I know for people to put, bring their mind around that, but what it aids to this on its own, it's a little bit overwhelming, but while, as part of a blend, it really highlights the spice, the minerality, and just aids to this unique complex wine. Wow. That just sounds incredible. <laughs> it sounds so unique. And I love, cause it's very clear that you brought a lot of what you learned over there into specifically making this wine and all of the methods that go into that. I think that that's really fascinating. Yeah, that's, uh, taking methods of uh, some of the great areas that I've worked in throughout mm -hmm. the world and really trying to showcase and highlight our amazing fruit here. Because I truly right. think Sonoma County, Alexander Valley, these beautiful regions that we're situated in uh, have some of the best terroir for red board over idols on the planet. Um, and just using some of the techniques to highlight these unique sites, bring attention to detail in the farming, to the winemaking, and the new winery it just produces spectacular wine. So, uh, you know, on, on our side, just try to make sure we nail the vineyard and then bring it into the winery and not mess it up from there. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And then if you haven't noticed, we are drinking out of beautiful Sophie and Walt's glassware today. Love these glasses. Oh, they are absolutely the best. What is your favorite part about Sophie and Walt's glassware? Uh, I love the shape and the thinness of the lip here. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the key things that I look for in any um, glassware. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, another level of elegance. It just feels really light in the hand and there's yes. a delicate uh, element to it. But the thinness of it and the unique shape really just kind of, you know, highlights the aromatics um, and that thin lip just coats it across your palate. Mm -hmm. And that's really uh, one of the unique things that I love about this uh, producer. That is great. I was actually, I know that was on the fly. I was really wanting to know your your thoughts on that. When, when we were doing this and we were putting, you know, obviously we're looking at every single detail at the tasting room here. Uh, so Laura and my dad and I and a part of the team were looking at, you know, probably 20 different glass providers and came down to a few. And this was just such a unique mm -hmm. hand-blown uh, glass and we thought it was perfect to showcase our unique ones. Absolutely. Yeah. And it fits in so perfectly. Yeah. Uh, so. For those that don't know, Sophia and Wald has actually become a partner of ours within the Behind the Bee tasting series. So for okay. each I didn't of even our know that. Fantastic. I know, right? Their glasses are spectacular. They are. They're world class. So we'll be having their glassware at each of the Behind the Bee tastings. And so you can actually get your own Sophia and Wald glassware. It'll be available at the website in our notes there. And when you buy six glasses, you receive two free. And also 20% of proceeds are coming back to the Bee Foundation again. Fantastic. So Wonderful. they are a great partner with us as well. And that's the true Aperture experience right there. Exactly. If you come to Aperture, that's the only glassware we use here. So, um, so you need to come yes. here to see it. Yes, if you need to test it out, <laughs> we, we have, we're here for you. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so let's kind of dive in a little bit. I am really excited. I had a lot of questions for you, Andy. So we had a number of people write in. And How much time questions. do you have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I think one of the first ones that came up was what portrait has the most compelling or interesting backstory that you've captured? Ooh, this is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have to say it's probably the um, the portrait of a Cuban woman uh, that we call Devil Proof that's on our Devil Proof label. <clears throat> There's a couple of reasons for it. Is One is that every time I look at her, it makes me happy. Uh, she just has this look of we turned up we made a whole wine from this yeah exactly and um in, in cuba if you eat well drink well and live well the devil can't get you so we call her devil proof um, and that, uh, that's what she looks like and she was a this wonderful uh, with the glare there yeah this wonderful woman oh. that uh, jesse was uh would sit on her lap and uh, she was absolutely fantastic. And I, w I went back to Cuba a couple of years ago trying to find her 
and I I just could not find her. But that that if I was to think of one portrait, don't you think, Jesse, that it would have to be her? Well, this is certainly one of my favorites for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, there's I have this in my house. It's here in the aperture tasting room. You never paid uh, me for that, did you? What? I said, you never paid me for that print. <laughs> Nor will I. <laughs> uh, I'll give you some wine. Don't worry, Dad. Um, <laughs> no, but every time, you know, she just has a power and aura and a sense of uh, meaning behind her. And we obviously utilize this for the Devil Proof uh, uh, label ourselves. So really, really powerful one. And with this is, it's really interesting, the uniqueness of this have, being tied into food and wine. Mm -hmm. This photo has been in uh, not just Aperture here, but we've seen it in tasting rooms. It's at Peter Michael, I think. Oh, really? Um, and then it's been in Michelin starred restaurants throughout the world. Uh, so a lot of the food and wine community gravitates towards her as well. Wow. That's fascinating. I didn't so, know that either. I, I would have picked the same one, me Padre. Well, here we go. Yeah. Great ones pick alike. <laughs> and you were saying, did, I, did you already say, I believe there's a release coming up. Yes, good point. We just, uh, you, you remember, it's good. <laughs> uh, we, we just released the newest vintage, uh, the 2018 Devil Proof yesterday. So for all of our mailing lists, this is one of our most allocated wines. Mm -hmm. uh, so really excited. The 2018 vintage is probably my favorite vintage we've released to date. Uh, it's just a spectacular vineyard, uh, vintage uh, showcasing these two unique dry farm uh, hillside Malbec vineyards. Oh, that's um, exciting. So really cool. Uh, I'll have to ask the board if we're sold out yet, but um, we released it yesterday. And so hopefully there's still a little bit left. Absolutely. Yeah. And we did. There's have a, a shameless plug. Uh, wine Advocate said, hands down, the best Malbec that they've ever tasted. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. That's wonderful. Fe fe and, and then dot, 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 and happens to be from Sonoma. Right. So we, were, we felt very honored uh, showcasing the unique sites here in Sonoma County mm -hmm. as well. Sonoma yeah. County produces some, like you said, it really world class region. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so we did have a comment come in. I do want to uh, highlight. So how do people find out about your wine club? Um, you know, it's really been a mix of ways. This is our first time ever having a brick and mortar space to bring uh, our amazing friends, family and uh, customers here to enjoy the wines situated in the middle of our vineyards. So I encourage anyone to come out here if you were able to get out to Sonoma County or Healdsburg. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, go to our website, aperture-sellers.com. Mm -hmm. um, and how people have really been finding out about our wines, uh, if you're really into wine and you read Wine Spectator or Wine Advocate, we've been highlighted throughout the years uh, in there consistently, especially focusing on Bordeaux varietals on the Sonoma side, mm -hmm. a little bit differently than um, a lot of other producers had. But uh, and also great partners with charities like yourself, you know, that one of our key, key elements of marketing is we put most of those dollars into uh, partnering with charities that we really believe in. And so this is uh, a key way of getting introduced to new people as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was reading up on that before the interview and I was really impressed with the amount of philanthropic uh, opportunities that you guys have here. Yeah, well, it's really important to us mm -hmm. uh, and it has always been. This has always been a huge part of my father's career as well. Um, and all the charities my father has donated throughout the years. Mm -hmm. But in the last five years, I believe, between uh, wine donations and private labels, we've raised over $1.4 million for charities. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Well, thank on behalf of charities, thank yes, you. Pleasure, yeah, and hopefully we <laughs> raise some good money for you uh, right now with, the, uh, with this special offering as well. Absolutely, so again, for those just joining us, I'm here with legendary father-son duo. Jesse Katz and Andy Katz and Aperture Cellars, we are featuring a couple of the soil series of wines today. We may actually, if you want, would you like to move on to the red? Absolutely. <laughs> Is it the Cabernet? Yes. Okay. Um, Dad, do you have backup bottles there? I we're one for one so far. Uh, you know, I think that I'm just gonna I'm I'm just gonna finish this uh, this white because it's so good, and then uh, for dinner okay. I'm gonna pop the red. There you go. Well, we're going to jump ahead. Absolutely. And we're going to bring that. So, again. Home, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so as a reminder to everyone, Jesse, Andy, Opture Sellers will be donating 20% of all proceeds from the Soil Series of Wines. You can get the wines at aperture-sellers.com. Make sure to use the code VWINE. And any of your purchases, 20% will be coming back to the B Foundation. So once again, thank you for that. Pleasure. Yeah. And when you go to the Aperture website, why we're calling it Soil Series, mm -hmm. these are blends of different vineyards. We farm all of them ourselves. This year we have full control over all viticultural practices. 
Uh, so it's multiple different vineyards might go into one blend, but they're all the same region and all the same soil type. And so we wanted to kind of think of regional blends a little bit different than most, mm -hmm. uh, as we think about most things different. Um, and that's why we found that certain soil types, for instance, the Cabernet that we're drinking right now, this is the wine that started the brand back in 2009. Uh, mm -hmm. My father and I started this in 2009 during my time at Screaming Eagle, mm -hmm. but we always were focusing on the hillside volcanic soils of Alexander Valley. And that's still today what makes up this wine. It's four different specific hillside Cabernet vineyards in the eastern part of Alexander Valley, all making up that volcanic soils. And then we'll always blend in a little Merlot, Malbec, sometimes a little of both. This year we do have a little bit of both and also our first time working with our new Petit Verdot vineyard. Wow. But that is our Cabernet blend and certainly our flagship. Uh, the photo on this one, all of, all of these labels are photos that my father has taken. Uh, this was actually the cover of his book on Sonoma that he did with Jim Lobby from Wine Spectator. Called Sonoma. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. And it must be incredible to have all of those uh, wonderful photos available. Yes, I can't make enough wine. <laughs> Change of wine. <laughs> Yeah, there's a backup of images for labels, Jesse. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that actually is a great transition to Jesse going into talking about the soil, talking about the terroir here and Healdsburg and tourism. How obviously harvest just finished and we had those devastating fires that everyone has heard about. We had a great conversation at Single Thread last week. Last week? Was that last week? Yeah, Maybe two so. weeks ago? Yeah. Time is flying. It is. And you just said some incredible, I loved what you were saying about trusting, trusting your producer. And, you know, Sonoma and Napa are still here. They are still producing such incredible wine. The tourism here is absolutely amazing. Can you speak a little bit more to that on where you guys are at? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think I, maybe it was two weeks ago because it was right as we were finishing up harvest. We, we uh, our last day of harvest, this was the earliest vintage of my career. Uh, first time I've never picked any Cabernet in October um, in my entire uh, time making wine here in California. And our last day of harvest was September 26th. And um, we were done by the time the second round of fires, the glass fires that were just absolutely devastating throughout Napa and came into part of Sonoma as well. And it's horrific what happened. You know, and we went to, and this was our second round of fires on top of having to deal with other precautions with COVID and other elements. So this was as complex of a harvest as I've ever dealt with and, and as stressful, certainly. Um, but the one thing that I want to reiterate to that we, when we were talking about is uh, there has been so much bad press of about a lot of unknowns Absolutely. and people are saying that to write off the vintage for California mm -hmm. for 2020, which is completely ridiculous in my opinion. Um, going into this harvest, we knew we were going, we were set up for uh, what we like to call winemaker vin vintage. And I say this in the sense, we knew it wasn't going to be a big crop, so the growers weren't going to be ecstatic, but uh, winemakers usually love that because we had really, really small berries, small clusters, mm -hmm. and we know that that translates into these rich, powerful, complex wines. Um, we still have that. And just because we had fires and smoke in certain areas, some areas, yes, might not be able to make wine, but there's a lot of areas that will make absolutely stunning wines. Mm -hmm. And what I would ho hope that everyone gets from this is trust the producers. If you trust a winemaker, uh, a certain producer, they will not put out a bad wine this vintage. Some of them will have an opportunity to put out a spectacular wine. Some might not, depending on where they are. So I don't want to belittle the um, the headache and the, the trauma that it, it's, some wineries will take with this vintage. But with us, we're down probably 40 to 50% as far as production goes. Mm -hmm. But what we have remaining is absolutely spectacular. I love that. And I love how, um, I just love how you even put that. Because the, the fact of the matter is, is that Napa and Sonoma wine producers, there's a pride in what they're putting into the bottle. They're not going to put out a bad bottle of wine. This is one of the most luxurious wine areas on the planet. Uh, Napa and Sonoma make about 12% of the wines coming out of California. Mm -hmm. So these are small amounts of the best wines in the world. And if you really trust your producer and you have not seen uh, where they put out a bad product, don't expect them to do it this year. I just really hope that people understand that, that people might not have the same amount of wines. So you might see less amounts of them, uh, but there will be, I guarantee, some spectacular wines coming out this vintage. Yeah. To me, that just makes it more exclusive. Yeah, I, I agree, Basically. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. Andy, want to come back to you. Uh, I did lose my feed here, so hopefully 
We're just going to have to still hear you, but I won't be able to see you. Uh, yeah, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what happens when we go live, the lovely tech issues. Uh, I would love to hear, you know, since we're, we're coming back to you, I'd love to hear more. What is what is the current project that you're working on? Well, I, I was, I've been in say, I mean, obviously everyone's been uh, dealing with this COVID, which has been just horrendous for all of us. And I just thought, you know, I've been around for about six or seven months and I, uh, I'm like, Jesse, if I'm not doing something creative, I start going a little bit nuts. So it had been long enough that I've taken enough pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge that I really wanted to go out and uh, do a project. And I've always wanted to do a project on the American um, um, uh, National uh, Parks. So I thought what I'll do is I'll get a van, travel in a van, and, and uh, photograph the National Parks. So from the time that I thought about that, to the time I was flying to Denver to pick up the van, <laughs> I got obsessed with looking at these vans and I found one, I hit it, hit the road. I had no idea of how long I was going to go for, where necessarily I was going. I got a couple of books on national parks. I had an idea. I got in the van and six weeks later, I, I, I came home. But I had no, it was really very free and I had no agenda. Uh, I was photographing national parks. I'd wake up early. And then during the day, you know, when, when the light is, I, I photograph very early in the morning and very late when the sun is rising, when the sun is setting. During the day, if the sun is out, I'll either um, go over images or do emails or go, if there happens to be a, a village or a little city nearby, I'll go and walk around there. And I thoroughly love this. And I was just by myself and people were thinking I'm a little weird, but <laughs> I leave my cameras in the van. And I came up with images that I'm really, uh, I'm really uh, happy about, and uh, so that's what I'm going to be working on the next year. I have to say, I wasn't incredibly supportive of my father when he told me he was going to go live in a van for <laughs> an undefined period of time. At least he wasn't <laughs> taking you with him this time. And he had no. I was in the middle of harvest, so <laughs> that wasn't an option. Um, but I have to say, some of the images that he's been able to capture in these remote areas of these national parks are incredible. So. Uh, looks like we might need to make some more wine. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm very curious about this van, Andy. So is it one of those ones that have the bed and everything in it? What? Well, I, I, I call her Gypsy, and I didn't name her. She came to me. It's a 2012. It's a, <laughs> Nissan, it's a Nissan van. It's like a cargo van. It's kind of similar to the size of the van that um, Amazon uses, but a high roof. So you can stand up, mm -hmm. and it has a bed in it. It's got... A refrigerator. It's got a sink. It's got everything you need. It does, it does have a toilet. It's got a shower out back. But <laughs> I, I figured those things out pretty well. But it's very very comfortable. Rides great. I'm loving it. An outdoor shower. You know, some think that that's very luxurious. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. some people are like car people. Some people are watch people. My dad's now a van person. All <laughs> I hear from him in the middle of the night of this new van that just came out with a decked out interior. So. Uh, he is the man by the river living in the van. Oh. I've, I've, I've got a new van to send you, Jesse. You gotta <laughs> Just wait. I, You'll I, be joining him eventually. He's not joking. It'll be <laughs> you guys have two vans and you'll just travel along together. <laughs> I envy his freedom. <laughs> uh. Uh, so, Andy, you actually do. I was I was looking into a little bit of research for you. You actually do workshops, photography workshops. Is that correct? I used to, yeah. Before this happened, yeah, I've done mm -hmm. workshops in, uh, in Europe and the United States, and I, I work with Sony too. I'm one of their uh, artisans of imagery. I was actually the first artisan of imagery for uh, Sony, so I represent their high end cameras and um, have spoken internationally. Uh, about their cameras as well. What an honor, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It is, They're, they make incredible equipment. Um, so we actually just confirmed today, I'm so excited. So we will actually be having you with us out at the Sonoma Epicurean at the end of March as well. I can't and wait. Yes, we can't wait either. And we will be doing a special workshop that's actually going to be featuring you where you can teach some of our, our guests that come to the Sonoma Epicurean about just different facets of how to use even their iPhones to take incredible photos. We'll be doing a great um, 
activation around that during the event. So we're so excited to have you join us for that as well. It's an honor to be there. Awesome. Well, once again, everybody, if you're joining me, I am here with Jesse Katz and Andy Katz. Might have lost. Oh, there he is. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. We'd be happy to answer them live for you. Uh, Jesse, kind of coming back to you, again, I know that you are so philanthropic, but specifically for you, why why the Bee Foundation? Why pick us? Well, there's many reasons. Uh, one, the people behind the organization have been always really impressive and now considered uh, friends from Max to the whole crew there. Um, you know, I've just been always impressed with the level of events you guys put on, um, the organization in general and how it uh, works with uh, the other wineries. But when it comes down to it, it's what you guys are supporting. And, uh, you know, cancer touches every single person. There's, I remember one of the gala dinners we were at and um, I forget who was the, um, who was speaking at the time, but they said, raise your hand if you, someone you know, or a loved one has been affected by cancer. And there was not anyone who didn't raise their hand in, uh, in that room. And it was a big gala dinner of 300 plus people. I'm pretty sure it was Coach K. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I, pretty Yeah, that. yeah. Um, I, think, I think you're exactly right. Um, and so that is just really touching that, it, you know, this is an issue that we're all fighting together. Um, and that is, more than enough reason why we've always wanted to support you guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Goodness. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm trying to think we covered double proof, the release coming out. We have covered again, if you visit, visit aperture sellers.com, Jesse will be giving 20% back of those proceeds. If you use the code, the wine on their soil series, this is an excellent cabernet. Thank you so we much. We didn't get a chance to. Yeah, yeah we, we to just released this on one it. as well. This it's is so good. This is our 2018 um, Cabernet Blend. Uh, this is the wine that started Aperture back in 2009. And again, the 18 vintage is just such a special vintage. It is. And really excited to release this wine. Um, and yeah, check out all the wines that we have on there. We have mm -hmm. some of our single vineyard wines on there from uh, the last vintage, the 2017, uh, and then our 2018 blends and our 2019 aromatic whites. Oh my goodness, yeah. yes. And again, Healdsburg Tourism, come visit. You have to come see this place. I wish that everyone could see the other side of the camera. I wish right you could now. see it our view. Spectacular. Padre, yeah. you would have your camera going crazy right now. It's We've got an epic spot in here. Spectacular. Uh, but yeah, please, please come visit Aperture. We would love to uh, host you all. We, you know, designed this winery well before uh, any COVID elements, but really we haven't had to pivot away from the experience that we've been able to offer our guests right. because we created all these unique small rooms, yes. um, all separate from one another. So the social distancing is kind of part of the uh, makeup of this building, this unique building that uh, uh, Juan Carlos uh, Fernandez designed for us. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's in the middle of our vineyards overlooking our winery. So I encourage people to come visit. It's a special space. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Andy, for joining us today. Thank you, Jesse, for joining us of course. today. Thank it's been you. so great to spend some time with both of you. pleasure. Yes. And once again, be sure to visit aperture-sellers.com to purchase your wines for Sophie and Wald. Visit the website in our notes. I'll make sure to have Juliet put the link down there so everyone can go purchase their stemware and also get 20% back to the Bee Foundation. And if you want to see any of these new images my father's taking, yes. uh, Andy at andycatsphotography.com. <gasps> there we well, go. That, that's my email, just andycatsphotography.com. Oh, that, there we go. Yeah. I know. I know. Know. I know. 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 I'm, I'm, I'd the love, to, be, I'd love to hear from everyone. And if you have any more questions for him. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> About vans in particular. He, yeah, I, I, I got the van thing down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you guys once again for joining us today. It's been such a great time. And I do this at the end of every one of my lives. Just cheers and say, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Absolutely. Can't wait to have you all out in March. Absolutely. Yeah. Stay Thanks, safe, everyone. everyone.